Hi, in this video I'm going to be showing you how you can use Mass Effects as a physics system um, to place a bunch of objects uh, on a flat plane, um, believably, without any clipping or anything like that. Okay, so before we get started I'd like to quickly show you why um, scatter is not going to work for what we want to do. So I'm going to make a quick plane and I'm going to make a box, just like a little brick or something. And I'm going to use the um, compound object scatter I'm going to choose my distribution object as this plane. So with my brick selected and choosing this as a distribution object, I can now go into the modifier panel and I have a, a scatter um, object. And I can increase the number of duplicates. I'm going to put this up to 50. And I'm going to start uh, rotating them around so that you can see the sort of thing that um, we might have ended up with. Okay. Um, but the problem with doing this is we have them cl uh, clipping through one another, which uh, isn't very believable, particularly when you get this sort of business going on here. It's uh, obviously not correct. And you can go around deleting them, but um, that doesn't give us the best result anyway. So what we're going to do is we're going to use um, the Mass Effects physics system to drop lots of uh, bricks and objects from the sky and have them land in our scene. So here are a few objects that we may want to uh, set up using the Mass Effects system. Um, so to do that, uh, we need to click somewhere in uh, empty space on our toolbar, right click, and choose Mass Effects toolbar, and this will bring up the Mass Effects toolbar. Uh, if you have a version of Max older than 2012, then uh, you'll not be able to use this, but uh, 2012 and newer should have it. Um, so let's choose our first object on the left, and uh, the way we set this up to use the Mass Effects system is uh, to set as dynamic rigid body. And that will mean that it will. Uh, we want it to move and we want it to collide with things. Um, so let's choose that and let's hit play and see what happens. So it starts falling and uh, by default it uh, hits a ground plane here, uh, which most of the time is, is for what I'm doing what I would want anyway. Um, but if I wanted to set up another object uh, for it to collide with, I can, uh, I can do that too. So let's say we want to um, put a uh, some sort of a, a collision object kind of thing um, that's maybe on a slope or something like that. There we go. Um, and if I reset my simulation, this is this was this is do simulation. This is reset. Um, if I hit play, of course, it's going to go straight through it. That's because it's not set up to um, to be a, an object. And if I set it up as a dynamic rigid body as well, if I hit play now, what just happened there, rather amusingly, um, is they both the this this object collided with the floor which it was already inside of and to resolve that collision it kind of went flying so if you see things going flying it's probably because uh they're already inside of each other so do be aware of that so let's reset our simulation and um we can still use the ground plane uh as well as this uh all we have to do is instead of using a dynamic rigid body let's delete that now um if we choose a static rigid body then um this object will, will never actually move, it will just uh, be a piece of um, collision for other stuff. So let's hit play now, and sure enough it uh, the object hit that and it rolled and settled on, on top of it. So what about a more complicated measurement like this round um, kind of blob-like shape here? Uh, well actually by default this is going to work pretty well. Um, the reason is because if I choose again dynamic rigid body, um, then it will actually default to uh, using a generated convex collision mesh. Uh, and you can just see that a little bit uh, with the blue wires. And this will be a little bit easier to see if I, um, if I go to uh, wireframe mode. Uh, or maybe it won't. That's not, <laughs> not easy at all. Uh, let's do alt next. There we go. That's a little bit more easy to see now. And you can see it's automatically generated for us um, a not too bad approximation of the shape that we want. Um, so alt next again, uh, and let's hit play, and that works pretty well. You can see it's a little bit um, hard in its uh, surfaces, uh, they're not round like the object, uh, but if all you're doing is uh, using mass effects to get it to settle, then, then it's perfectly sufficient. Something you may wish to do though is um, actually expand the collision here. Um, they call that inflation, so if I uh, just drag this up you should be able to see it getting larger. Uh, and that's sometimes useful if um, if you've got an object like this one that has lots of curves and you don't want those curves to clip through with anything at all. You can make it a little bit larger 
um, that way. You can also make it a more believable amount. If you put in uh, a number of vertices here, if I put in 256, I think that's the maximum, and then regenerate from original, uh, and then it'll find out, uh, it'll have, make a new collision mesh. And you can see this one's a little bit smoother now. Um, and it should be uh, a slightly smoother rolling uh, thing that happens. Yeah, a little bit smoother. Um, unfortunately, you can't go any higher than 256. That's the most the Mass Effect system allows, I think. Okay, so that's very well and good. Um, but if you're running a lot of objects in a simulation and they're all using this convex collision, is there any way you can speed it up? Um, well, there certainly is. Let's apply a dynamic rigid body to this um, chamfer box object, which if I turn on wires, you should be able to see is a fairly simple um, chamfer box. And it's not necessary really to use a convex collision method like this. We can um, instead choose as a mesh type uh, any of sphere, box, or capsule. And these three are very, very cheap to use. And obviously this one would be using box. Um, and that will just make the, if you've got a lot of objects being calculated in your scene, that'll make it a lot, a lot quicker. Finally, um, one last little note um, is when you have two objects like this, uh, let me set both of these to um, dynamic rigid bodies. Uh, so my mouse is playing up here. Uh, dynamic rigid body. And the top one. Okay. Uh, now we run the simulation here. You can see what's happened uh, is uh, the collision hasn't gone inwards. And that's because collision must be convex, as I think I've mentioned already. Um, and that means that if I reset this now, um, you can see that the convex collision that it has made um, means that this has a flat bottom, which isn't what we want. Um, and there is a solution to that, though it isn't always perfect. Um, it can help. If you choose instead of mesh type convex, you choose composite, it will actually make a um, collision from several other meshes. So if I um, scroll down, you have to now click generate to, to preview this. You can see that it's had a a go at making it out of several collision meshes and that's uh, allowed it to put uh, what feels like a gap in here. They are actually in themselves each convex meshes, um, but because it's using several convex mes meshes, it's, a, it's allowed it to have a kind of hole in the middle. So if we run it again, hopefully, yeah, it falls on top of it kind of like we, we would expect, which is uh, much better. Um, so let's now apply all of this to uh, making a sort of brick-like um, scene of stuff. So all I'm going to do here is, uh, and this, this is kind of good fun, so I recommend everyone has a quick go at this, uh, make a kind of brick-like object, that's a bit long, there we go. Um, put it up in the sky, um, copy it a lot of times, in fact actually I'll set up the uh, dynamic rigid body first just so that I don't have to do it to all of them. And let's uh, duplicate this out a lot, so Okay, so I just sped up that bit of the video, it's just my computer being slow. Um, so these are all the uh, boxes that I've got, um, and I set them all to use the box collision, that'll just run, uh, run a little bit faster in the simulation. Um, and I'm going to use a little bit of uh, max script here, so uh, don't be too scared, um, just to randomize their position and stuff. The reason I don't use the scatter object is that would make them into one object, and I need them to be separate objects. Um, so this little bit of code uh, just says, um, I'll run through it quickly though, I have a Max Script tutorial coming up. Um, for every object in the selection, do its position at x, uh, add, add or subtract a random value between 10, minus 10 and plus 10, uh, for its position in y, and its position in, uh, oh, no, not z, okay. Um, and also change its rotation anywhere between 0 and 360 degrees in each axis. So let's just run that, and that just makes them kind of random. Cool. Now uh, we'll probably have some that are clipping through each other and they'll just fly out miles, but that's okay, I, I think, I hope. Uh, let's just run the simulation and, and see what happens. As you can see, even on my really slow computer, that you know happened very quickly because they were all box collision objects. And we have, um, oops, uh, so I made a bit of a mistake there. I clicked away from them, new error. Uh, let's run that again. And this time to take a look at them, 
uh, and this is when you're happy with how they're placed, um, you can open up this uh, tools dialog and under the tools menu just choose, um, if, you, if you want an animation then uh, use the bake options, if you just want it to be static, um, which is all I'm using this for, just capture selected. Now I can click away and it won't, they won't mess up. Um, but yeah, as you can see, all these bricks are placed believably, they're sitting on top of each other, and uh, there's absolutely no clipping through each other because, uh, you know, physics prevented that. Um, so we get quite a nice result. Okay, uh, thanks for watching. Um, more videos on the way soon.